الكلمة الآن لرئيس وفد دولة ماليزيا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Your Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Your Royal Highnesses Excellencies, Ministers Ladies and Gentlemen <coughs> Let me start by extending my sincere appreciation to His Majesty King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud the custodian of the two holy mosques his Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, and the government of Saudi Arabia for initiating this historic inaugural IMCTC meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, today's gathering in Riyadh could not be more crucial. We need to remind the world that the Muslim nations present today completely condemn terrorism and violent extremism. The world should have no doubt that we, we stand collectively with the international community in the fight to eradicate this global menace. All of us are more than aware of the threat of terrorism and the carnage these groups are spreading not only regionally but also globally. We in ASEAN have been monitoring closely from afar developments in this region with regards to the Islamic State or Daesh and other radical terrorist groups. Malaysia is also aware that there is a widespread belief that Iran has contributed to the instability in the region. On that note, Malaysia has always been consistent in our position that anyone should avoid any further action that could be detrimental to the stability of this region. Ladies and gentlemen, just two years ago, as the chair of the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting, I consciously persuaded and convinced all 10 ASEAN countries and their defense ministers to jointly declare our strong condemnation against the Islamic State or Daesh. However, my fellow colleagues, today, it seems our biggest fear has become a reality. It pains me to say that this threat has now reached our shores in Southeast Asia. As the Islamic State gets squeezed out of the Middle East, the prospect of Southeast Asia becoming more of a target has increased significantly. And earlier in May, the Philippines faced the onslaught of the Islamic State, a phenomenon we once thought was exclusive only to the Middle East, but took only more than five harrowing months before the Philippines are able to declare the end of the siege in Marawi City. Furthermore, the coalition's successes against the Islamic State in the Middle East has led to the return of foreign fighters to our region. Regional groups such as the Abu Sayyaf, Jama'a Islamiyah, and the Mujahideen have already publicly pledged their allegiance to the Islamic State. These groups served as a home away from home for those running away from Mosul, from Aleppo, from Raqqa, <coughs> and they have gone further they have gone further to declare an Islamic State Caliphate called the East Asia Wilaya, the self-declared Caliphate which spans Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Southern Thailand, and Myanmar as they continue to lose territory in Iraq and Syria. Make no mistake, this development will not hamper our efforts in Southeast Asia, and we will fight them on all fronts. Malaysia, as a founding member of the IMCTC, has never wavered in our efforts to combat the spread of terrorism. Firstly, Malaysia, together with Indonesia and the Philippines, 
have pushed through a security agenda never before seen in our region called the Trilateral Cooperative Arrangement, an arrangement which combines maritime patrols, air patrols and command centres, jointly led by the armed forces of the three nations to address threats in the Sulu Seas, a maritime area just south of Marawi City. Just a few days ago, Prime Minister Najib Razak met with President Joko Widodo from Indonesia and jointly endorsed to further expand the number of joint border posts on both sides of our borders. Malaysia and Indonesia also agreed to pursue land efforts through both our armies under our trilateral arrangement, which is currently focused only on maritime and air patrols. Moreover, <clears throat> Prime Minister Najib and I have also subsequently met with His Majesty Sultan Hassan Abolkia of Brunei Darussalam, where His Majesty not only welcomed our trilateral efforts, but also agreed for Brunei Darussalam to continue in the arrangements as an observer. This brings me, secondly, to the King Salman Center for International Peace which I am proud to announce is currently operational, a landmark collaboration between Malaysia and Saudi Arabia in our fight against terrorism and extremism, which is co-chaired by myself and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed Salman, with His Majesty King Salman and Prime Minister Dato Najib as patrons. The center aims at countering the narratives and ideologies that underpins terrorism and radicalism in Islam. We are now focusing on sharing counter-narratives, combined with implementing a soft power approach where we address the conditions conducive to the spread of terrorism and seek to undo the radicalization process. This, Your Excellencies, is essentially a war over the hearts and minds of our people. To do this, a credible narrative needs to be told in which Islam and modernity are compatible. Material progress and religious devotion go hand in hand and religious knowledge and scientific inquiry mutually reinforces each other. Ladies and gentlemen, we also cannot deny that instability surrounding the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia would only serve as an avenue for terrorist groups to flourish. This is why I have instructed the Malaysian Armed Forces to remain in the Kingdom and to remain in the Kingdom for three reasons. Firstly, if necessary, to be in a position to provide assistance and facilitate Malaysians in the region. Secondly, to provide humanitarian assistance and possibly contribute to rebuilding efforts in Yemen, if required. And thirdly, and more importantly, is to signify Malaysia's steadfast and resolute stand with Saudi Arabia in preserving the security and the sanctity of the two holy cities of Makkah and Medina. Malaysia stands ready to share our expertise. Just as we have long worked with partners around the world, but Excellencies, where do we go from here? What can we learn from IMCTC? For one, we have embraced the fact that understanding and cooperation remains our utmost priority as the best guarantee against conflict. We have to admit, there may be a lot of differences between us. There'll be a lot of things that may divide us. But this all pales in comparison to what should unite us. It would be disastrous if we approach everything from a zero-sum game. We would get nothing done. The key is for us to be able to accept our differences. The key is also for us to find common ground on the problems we face and to go forward together. I believe one thing we can all agree on today is that we have a common enemy. 
And this has united us in more, day, more ways than one. For example, in ASEAN, where I come from, issues such as the South China Sea, the Rohingya refugee crisis, the North Korean situation, has naturally resulted in a difference of opinions from ASEAN countries. But one thing remains. ASEAN is united and stands united against the Islamic State and Daesh, as I alluded to earlier. As Muslim nations, it is our responsibility as leaders to address this problem which has tarnished the face of our religion. Today's meeting is important because if it's not for us, who else can we rely on to take the helm in the war against terrorism? As fellow Muslims and brothers in the Ummah, it is us, after all, who will bear the greatest burden if the cause of peace fails. We not only have to answer to the generations after us, but also to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we fail to rise to this occasion today. So in conclusion, Your Royal Highness, I am very proud to be a member of this historic initiative. And our presence here truly shows our commitment as brothers in the mission to uphold the safety and the security of the Ummah. Today we stand and will send a strong signal to the community of nations that Muslim countries are united in our desire to eradicate terrorism. Admittedly, there will be many difficulties and many setbacks ahead of us. But this much I do know, there can be no turning back. It will be a great tragedy if we let the progress that we have made slip, slip away from our grasp, as we do today, will only not only determine the fate of our Ummah, but also the future of Islam, which have, we have built together. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.